All right, all right. Welcome back to True Footy Podcast 49 for our second annual fantasy podcast. Joined by Lin Jong of the Western Bulldogs. Exact same joke <laughs> I made last year. <laughs> My arm's still broken. Like. He's out of quarantine. And <laughs> <laughs> Callum Morton. Welcome, Callum. How are you? Good. This is actually your third time on the channel. This is my third time. On Remember, the we did the. Uh, I was part of the live stream fart escapade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true. You had to be watching carefully to pick up on that one. Um, <laughs> do you remember we, this is the grand final live stream for those who don't know what we're referring to you got like 25,000 views that's like 6th or 7th like most viewed video on True Footy and you're in it so you be, have you been recognised yet? I haven't oh, okay. I haven't received any money of any sort <laughs> yeah, hey, send the man his check <laughs> send the man my 10 cents <laughs> yeah true well you're the only player, person at this table not to be recognised for being on True Footy remember you got recognised yeah, no, for I being did, once did. on for, the podcast for once, yeah. shit I've been on it the whole time and I only just got recognised for the first time on Sunday yeah. <laughs> by the police yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was that 12 year old yeah, kid that 12 year old kid <laughs> 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 yeah, he got I identified in a lineup. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is uh, reached pretty Dark low levels quickly. already. <laughs> already a coronavirus <laughs> reference. Yeah. That. Cool. You, you prepped those jokes already, haven't you? No, I didn't. Know. Well, did. I did say before you, uh, we started, before you got here, that, that I was going to make a coronavirus yeah. joke. <laughs> this is, we we yeah, thought, yeah, we thought you'd rock up wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually going to Thailand tomorrow night for two weeks and, and Vietnam as well. So I could actually get it and the joke would be on me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but more than it already is. Why people are more susceptible to the coronavirus? Is that yeah. a thing? No, it can't be. No, it's fucking Asian. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Is it? Oh. Yeah, cool, guys. Um, all right, so fantasy pod. <laughs> <laughs> Seamless segue into the fantasy pod. Um, yeah, so last year we did do a fantasy pod, and um, I feel like this year we, I need to I need to make the disclaimer to people listening: we're not billing ourselves as fantasy experts because. There are other people who do that and do that well. This is more of an opportunity for You're us. Not Calvin from the Traders. <laughs> yeah, no, it's Callum. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, we we're just trying to. We're just like four dudes, just four straight nice dudes <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> yeah, just to straight into that, didn't you? <laughs> just talking about our fantasy team. Well, they're not. <laughs> I thought we were talking about our fantasies. Yeah. Right? Go. <laughs> um, I got a team full of my favorite fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah I guess today we're just going to have a chat about who we've picked in our teams and why um, and there was there was actually a lot of good AFL fantasy content out there I discovered a page the other day that I'm or a channel that I'm going to shout out as well it's called AFL Fantasy Tips that is actually a serious channel it's hell good so go check that out if you want actual real good advice but today we're just going to talk about what the boys from True Footy and Two Associates um, have done with their <laughs> team <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm actually, I'm actually not good at fantasy at all. No, like, I think yeah, so. We, in, we know that though. Yeah, yeah I know. In last, in last year's comp, there was, for the true footy, there was what, 110 participants or something, hey? Yeah, I think I think that came it. 83rd or something. Did you? <laughs> yeah, right. I was terrible. Yeah. Well, you did quite well. What did you come uh, with? I didn't really look. I was, uh... Oh, he's too good I think you were like pushing yeah, the top pretty, 10. Maybe. You, you were top 20. I, I did, I did, oh, I did okay. okay. But it's too good to look. Yeah. Yeah, so, right. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I like, mean, look the, at the, the real competition. He's got the, bigger the TF, and better to worry the, about. The TFP ladder was like not the competition I was looking at. Yeah, I was looking clearly. at the main thing. Like. Clearly. Well, we've got like 183 people signed up this year so far. Wow. Um, and there's a 40 tipping comp no, I as haven't well. signed up, so that's 180. Haven't? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> get out. Get out. <laughs> yeah, seriously. No, no. So for those watching or listening, Look in the description of this video and you will find a code to the Fantasy League and we'd love to have you. And uh, it'll be very easy to beat me. I think Quartz is the only one who did particularly well last year. What did you come, Bush? I, I, I think I you think beat I, me, actually. I think I did pretty well. Yeah, you well. too bad. I was me. like middle, yeah. upper middle. Jordan. Upper middle class. <laughs> I was middly average. <laughs> <laughs> upper middle class. Um, uh, Joyce is actually pretty good at fantasy too, but I think he just stopped playing halfway through the year. Because he was top for a little while, hey? In fantasy or? Yes. Oh, okay. I was going to say that's too much information, Callum. Um, <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys actually watch much fantasy content? Like particularly you, Quartz, because you, you, you're always like a full bottle on this. What do you actually watch to get? Or do you listen to the fantasy traders or whatever? So they're... sometimes like if there's an article that pops up, then I'll read their article. Okay. Um, oh, that's it? That's pretty much it. Okay. Like, um, like I've had a couple of other mates that I've discussed with it all week yeah. and then uh, that's really the main thing I do when other than an Eagles game when I watch footy is just look at their fantasy yeah season, right so. yeah what about you Mort? Uh same same I read all the fantasy articles I don't really watch too much of the videos and stuff I've got part of like another draft league which is pretty serious oh true um, yeah so like a lot of my time is mostly spent with that and 
to be honest, last year the classic was just a lot of like, oh shit, it's Friday, I need to swap in this, and swap out that. <laughs> um, but no, I'm trying to, I'm gonna, gonna try to do it properly this year and take a little bit of a different approach. Yeah. Um, because I've always been very just like load up on the best players I can and not really worry about the cash. Oh. Where this year I'm gonna start looking for the cash cows and. Interesting. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. you point chase rather than like yeah. yeah appreciate the value and stuff mm. what about you bush are you more of a are you a connoisseur of fantasy content not really i'll read like like these guys <laughs> this has been terrible <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah i'll pretty much sort of like maybe look at a few like drafty like the rankings and stuff because i'm in a draft league myself so yeah. like i'll look at that sort of stuff a bit but other than that i'll read what pops up yeah okay yeah, so we've really played down the, and, co- and the content. And about and everyone, we're experts. Everyone's just, everyone's just turned the podcast off. Yeah, 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 from here, they're like, like fucking I don't know. Like, these guys openly suck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> At least they're upfront about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you guys have a particular philosophy about when, when you recruit? So you just said you used to just kind of load up on the best players. Yeah, who, uh, my, my uh, tactics strategy last year was... Um, who can I afford that's got the highest average and I just bring them in just week after week yeah, after okay. week after week. Yeah. Whereas this year I'm going to really try um, start with people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that happened then. It's cool, um, it's cool. <laughs> start with people who have the potential to grow heaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. I like it, I like it. I, I kind of go for the, the classic late um, or I used to like fill the team half with like premiums and the other half with like rookies. Um, and then, yeah, it wasn't so much into mid prices, but I feel like there's a few juicy mid prices this year. What about you, Courts? What's your philosophy? Well, like, I do like mid prices as well, if, especially if they're like, you know, they're going to make money and yeah. then they turn into like premiums. Like, for example, Brad Crouch is a big example last year. Like, he, mm. like, he, not the plan was always get him out once he like popped out in money, but he just never stopped. Like, he always turned up after every week. Um, but I got, I've got a few rules when I choose my team at the start. Um, couple of them I can't say but Ooh, um, wow. usually like the first, thing I do, the first thing I do is just, <laughs> be on this podcast just, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> I do have a philosophy yeah. that I can't talk about yeah, exactly. here's all my tips so, and strategies I can't tell unless you, you pay, <laughs> unless you pay me unless you pay me no, um, I, first of all I pick I, I pick players that I like first um, there's like rule number one I have is no flogs so oh, okay. all yeah, of Richmond right. aren't in there yeah so, I know you are very like yeah. anti-Richmond aren't you yeah yeah. <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair enough. That's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, is that does that that not to like the um, detriment of your team though? Uh, no, not really because I guess you can Richmond get away with it, yeah. Richmond players aren't even that good fantasy wise. Yeah, though. I suppose that's true. They all play their roles. So. That's very true. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. The only person's probably what, Dusty. Yeah. Even then, he's yeah, he's game. decent. But yeah, he's a shit yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very true. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, I guess we can sort of go through it. Um, like I think we can just go. Everyone go through their backline, midfield, forward. Discuss. Then, yeah, yeah, just discuss like who we pick. So um, there is a very. Is that an airplane? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, just, uh, just wait for that to subside. No. Um, okay. So for defenders, I I did the usual thing. I, I start with my rookies, um, which I, I don't know why, but I like to yeah. look at because I like to load up on the guys that I think um, will be good rookies because I think that's important. But then again, like now this time of year, everyone's going to change their rookies around right before or right as the March series ends because we don't know who's going to be playing. Yeah. Um, but I actually found there's not a good amount of defender rookies this year. So, like, there's two guys that were p- taken early in the draft last year, Lockie Ash and Hayden Young, who ordinarily would be mm. really good fantasy picks. But Hayden Young's in doubt for round one, I believe. Is that right, Bush? Yep, despite the fact I still currently have him in my team. But yeah, so <laughs> me yeah. too now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's, he would be a good option. Um, and then the other one's Lockie Ash who was pick four. And I just think he's he's in a GWS team that's so stacked. Like I, I haven't picked him for yeah. that reason, so Even I don't the back know. Line, yeah, backline GWS yeah, have quite a few people already. So. Yeah, so I went um, Will Gould. He's 220k um, first year player. He's like over 100 kilos. He's very developed. Sydney, a young team. They're going to play him. Um, I went Jack Madgen. I think he's. Oh, I don't have his price. It was like 280k. I want to say. I made 96 in March one. So or oh, yeah, the first game of the March. Then I went uh, the mid price of Doherty. Um, I'll ask you guys, does everyone have Doherty? Yeah. yeah. I don't so, have him yet, but I'll probably a, shuffle him in. First, yeah, right. first person I put in the yeah. team because it started from defenders and Doherty, yeah, def- Doherty's definitely the first person. Yeah, he's, like, he's super underpriced, I think. You're not worried about the two ACLs, the two ACLs? If, you, if you're worried about injuries, you, you, like, you shouldn't play this game. Like, Ooh. Hmm? Mm. A little bit of insight coming out. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, you're right. That's very true. At 563 is good value. Uh, I do have... 
I, I'm battling in between. I've got there's a couple of mid prices I like at the moment. Dan Houston, uh, who I think everyone has. The yeah. other one I really like is Hunter Clark because I just feel it's kind of I, I, he's always been like one of my favorites when he before he got drafted. So there's a bit of a romantic notion in there. Um, no homo. And, before he um, was drafted. No homo. That's <laughs> romantic. Not, no homo. That's not the base I'd be covering when you're talking about pre-draft love. That's not <laughs> the base I'd be covering. Just saying. <laughs> this is this is like the lowest brow <laughs> podcast I've ever done. Um, I just think he's he's probably going to get a lot of midfield minutes this year. So as a defender at 574k, I think that potential to be juicy. Um, and I didn't pick Houston. Um, you got I a might switch, switch, switch that around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and the premiums I just had, um, whichever premiums I had left or like could afford at the end were Crisp and Stewart. Um, and on the bench, I went Stasevich. He's 189k. I'm hoping he cacks a game. I think he only got like 30 in March 1. Um, and Jez McLennan from Gold Coast, because, again, I think he's a chance to play early. But yeah. um, You can't really expect much from the defenders, uh, rookie defenders, because they're most, they're most likely going to be a key backs and just going to get, like, five disposals of the game. Yeah, that's why it's true. okay to pick the oh. ones that are going to be playing first round, because that's the cash value. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. If you can make 60k off one of them, that's great. It's an upgraded to the premium. Mm-hmm. But yeah. even then, um, everyone's team's going to change before this yeah. round anyway because it just yeah. depends on rookies. It just depends on who's playing. So At the moment, I think we've all got a lot of placeholders in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think everyone's kind of got the same idea. What about you, Courts? What is, is there much different about your back line than um, what I went through? Mine's pretty much the same as yours, um, including I definitely have Houston. I'm definitely starting with him. Okay. Um, and the other one, I don't like Hunter Clark because I feel like you're paying too much for him. Mm-hmm. And then if he does like decently... Then he'll make a bit of money, and but the thing is, him doing decently would be like eighty or nineties, where you're looking for someone that gets ninety hundreds. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, I was hoping he would get. I was thinking he was capable of ninety, but again, that's kind of based yeah, on because well, a lot really of people jumped else. on him last year, and um, he did okay, but didn't do enough to for me to pick him. Like yeah. as I said, like I'd rather go for Robertson instead, his teammate. Um, is he listed as a defender? Oh, yes. oh no, that's no, Dylan Dylan Robert. Robert, yeah, yeah, I was thinking of some Robertson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Um, and then because that saves you like, nearly two hundred k. Yeah, I'd rather spend that so I've, got, k I've on, got him as well. On, like, like three hundred and twenty-seven k. That's yeah. See, I'm scared of Robertson, and I know that you just said if you're worried about injuries, you shouldn't play this game. It's probably true, but he's got like heart issues, and maybe uh, maybe it's worth him like picking him because he's worst case scenario, he just like well, he's gonna he's gonna, gonna pull he's gonna pull great numbers. Mm. Um, and if he manages to avoid any uh, injuries or whatever, mm. his price is just going to go through the roof. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Because he's going he's to hit his break even every single week. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, you've kind of talked me into I think he's low enough to take a risk because even if he does die early on in the season, you can... <laughs> <laughs> Poor choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's not funny. It's not funny. Um, you, like it's easier <laughs> to just downgrade him to like a one seventy k r and then yeah. get use that money. To get whereas if you go to like a Hunter Clark and he's failing, you'll he'll already lose like yeah, hundred k, right. mm. and then it's hard for him to get him to someone that's worth it. That's like a 700 k. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, and plus, like you said yourself, there's no particularly good rookies, so that mm. three twenty seven is not much higher than you're paying for like a Hayden Young or yeah, a Lucky Ash. That's very true, and, actually. Yeah. Because those guys start at like 250, 260. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. And you don't know if they're going to be good or not. Whereas like yeah. we've seen Robertson, he's he can yeah. be pretty good. I actually don't remember. Was he a strong fantasy player? I actually don't yeah. remember. Before okay. he... Yeah, it was like an 88 kind okay. of yeah, ish, okay. average, high yeah. 80s average. Right, fair enough. Because I've only been playing fantasy for a couple of years, so I'm kind of ignorant to anything that happened before last year. Um, any Anyone else you want to mention on your back line? Who's on your bench? I guess you said rookies will change for you. Rookies right? will change, but at the moment it's Sasevic and McLennan. I don't. Know, oh, I, same I, as me. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well, I only chose McL- I only chose those two because I went to. I haven't been watching my series at all, so I literally went order by team selected by percentage, and then I'm assuming everyone <laughs> that's picking these <laughs> ones like they're gonna play. So oh, yeah, like, right. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, see, I've yeah. got uh, McLennan as well on the bench, but then I've also got Graves from Hawthorne. I've got McLennan. Oh, Damien well. Graves. Yeah, yeah, apparently he did well. I didn't. He did, apparently he did really well and could be a very strong chance to get in at 107k. That's a good pickup, actually. Yeah, nice one. I like McLennan because I watched that. Um, I know that Gold Coast are very keen on him and yeah, see him, I've as got a him as a well. big mm. part of their future. At least that's what like the video was when they um, when they drafted him. They showed the process where they traded for him. So on that logic, as soon as he's fit, I reckon they'll play him. But um, Damien Graves is a good one. Since um, we're on rookies, any other rookies in general? Because I had Matthew Ling as my 170k because he's. But high draft pick when he was taken. Yes. He hasn't played in a couple of years. Swans are still high on him. He's finally yeah. healthy. 170. I like that as well. He's yeah. another one just to watch because you don't know yeah. if Sydney's going to yeah. play him. Um, 
Sydney are a young team, like I said before, with Will Gould in there as well. But yeah, he was like pick. 11, he's more of 12, a slide. He's he? a different player than Will Gould, my feeling. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but I just mean they're sort of competing for but that halfback role probably. Oh. But yeah, no, we'll see what happens there. But that's a good one to keep an eye on. So who's uh, who's everyone's premium choice as a defender? Oh, so I went with um, with Crisp and Stewart. Uh, I went just Crisp because uh, I was kind of like tossing up between him and Lloyd, but then Lloyd did slow down a little bit last year. So, mm. I'm, yeah, I, I just like Crisp, so I yep. picked him over Lloyd. Yeah, cool. yeah, I had the same toss up and also went with Crisp because I did have Lloyd last year and I was like, I loved him, but don't get me wrong. But, wow. yeah, felt like I had to mix it up because he was sort this of... Yeah. pre-draft. <laughs> <laughs> sure you want. Loved him pre-draft. Um, I have, I've actually got a, a stacked back line, a stack line. Stack line. Stack line. Um, stack I've line. got Lloyd and Crisp. Cool. Um, yep. In my back line. I think you say you have Sydney stack in your back line. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Lloyd, I, th- I think I think he is um, easily the best fantasy defender in the league and you can't go past him. But to not have Crisp in your team, especially after mm. what was the last March game, 135 points he scored. Um, yeah. Which and is crazy. His consistency as well. He's been yeah. pretty consistent the past few years, Crisp, as well. Mm. What did you say? Uh, I, did, I didn't know you got 135 in March. Like, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, but I just yeah. picked him because <laughs> Yeah, they're very good. Um, very good research. First March game, yeah, 135. Yeah. Strong. Yeah, highest, yeah, highest score of the game. Yeah, the other popular defender as well is uh, Led. I was like, okay, yeah. up as well, but. Um, I started with him last year and he didn't really do that well. I he feel like last year was a dip of form for like, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Le- like He didn't easily get like 110 average, but he was like just like on 90s. Yeah, and that's that, fair. That really, like, I, I think, I think last, last year, year I went Laird over Lloyd and it just ended up biting me in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. And not in a good way. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, enough of the defence. What about midfield course? Why don't you take us through your midfield? Uh, so first person I chose was definitely Tom Mitchell. Um, mm-hmm. Eva's comeback is Big so yes. cheap for what he can do, like top average a score of 2018 and the pig is literally the pig so definitely picked him well, not literally. and then so and then I've gone with my same rule of picking players that I like and that do really good so Josh Kelly is my next pick ah. um, he is very expensive I think like one of the most yeah, expensive ones uh, I think no he is the, uh, under Grundy is the second most expensive Josh Kelly yeah, I think wow. so uh, yeah, and then only 8% of people have him well, when I looked, yeah. which was a couple of days ago. I don't, yeah, but that was I, the I thing I was under the radar. Yeah, I, 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 I really rated him as a player. And then I say, if he like stays fit, he's definitely Brownlow worthy. But, yeah, um, especially with um, Taranto out. Yeah, so, and then that's why as well I've gone with Cornelio. I didn't have Cornelio initially, but now that Taranto's out, um, I definitely picked him up to mean more midfield time. But even then, uh, Cornelio still did pretty well last year mm. with Taranto because even like when he sits forward, he still kicks couple of goals which mm. gets him to that ton every yeah day. I think I read this is actually from an article and this is some bit of, bit of, bit of insight <laughs> this is actually real Peer so your um, he spent it was something like he spent 25% of his time in the forward line which is a fair bit for a midfielder mm. um, and still managed to average well over 90 every game yeah yeah he's, he's quite a like prolific goal kicker for yeah. a yeah. player who just rests forward he's yeah. quite good like it's that yeah dusty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who isn't, am I right? <laughs> yeah, and then so I've, um, I've gone with the four premiums and four rookies, which is what you've gone with as well. Wait, is Kelly, Kelly more expensive than McRae? Kelly is more expensive than McRae. Mm, he averaged That is more. interesting. Yeah. Did he really? Yeah. Wow, I must have missed that. Um, but he, he, did play, he did play less games. Um, yeah, he did that makes injured, sense. But he, yeah. the games he played, he averaged more. So yeah, my, wow. my last pick for premiums was McRae, just because uh, Bulldogs run at the start is... Nuts, like um, they're versing all the crowds at the start. Yeah, start. yeah and then true. he it doesn't even matter. Like even if he faces good teams, he's he's just good. And um, so who was your pick out of the Bulldogs' yeah. big three? Dunkley, Bonton, and McRae. I think I have Dunkley as well, but I'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. And then my next four are just the rookies, which are like the the Rao, the Anderson, and then yep. the next two will just be whoever's playing. The Rowell. The, the Rowell and the Anderson. The is that a bar or a soap <laughs> opera? <laughs> Boy band. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you went Rowell, Anderson, Sarong? Anderson, Sarong. I uh, just literally, Sarong, I just put in before just because um, he had to hide. Things like that. I haven't looked at the rookies at all. So He's... I'll make a more informed decision on that once... Um, well, once the teams are out, Bush is like Freeman are pretty high on Sarong, aren't they? They're, she's starting to shape up for round one. Like all yeah. the talks, all preseason was Hayden Young will be the first to debut. Now they've flipped That's and right. say Sarong. Yeah, and yeah. So I think we're, in in March one rather, Sarong had like 40%. fourteen, yeah, forty percent game time and, and fourteen yeah. touches or something yeah. stupid like that, and like so, a bunch of clearances. Yeah. yeah, that's that's true. Like four or five clearances, which is a good sign, and. 
Did you mention the last one? Uh, yeah, we'll just get Pickett, just because he's... Oh, I thought you hated Richmond. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I'll trade him out right now. No, um, <laughs> just because he's 170k, he's definitely going to play because yeah. because of that magical 360, man. Like, anyone would have him in the same after the <laughs> final 360. Have you seen the documentary about him, anyone? This is a clip. Fuck no. <laughs> I watched it, it wasn't too bad. Oh, okay. Well, the documentary's just on him. Yeah, it was like, it's a half hour thing. It was on YouTube. <sighs> I, oh, I ranted about. I, I don't watch YouTube. <laughs> 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 Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not my medium. Yeah, cool. Um, sweet. All right. Um, my midfield. I went. So I, I picked the rookies first because I thought these are really important. The midfield rookies. Um, again, the subject to change. But Rowland Anderson, pick one and two. Probably going to play from day dot. Uh, pick it again. Probably one of the first one seventy k players you pick because. Um, <laughs> Pick it. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a pun there. The, the other one that's interesting for me is Tom Green. Now, I originally was now not going to have him anywhere near this team. Oh, but Taranto out, yeah. Yeah, but also in um, in the Marsh game, uh, obviously they pumped Sydney, but he had two goals and 21 possessions mm. um, in his first game of senior footy. Um, only 76 DT, but um, he's obviously a really talented player. So I, I, if they pick him round one, I'll keep him in my team for sure because yeah, I think no. it'll go well. Uh, premiums were... I'd, Pretty much just went with whatever cash I had left. Uh, Mitchell, one of the first picks for obvious reasons, coming back from injuries at a discount. I went McRae and Dunkley. Mm. And uh, Lockie Neal, I think, was just the, the best player. I so why, why McRae or Dunkley over Bond? Uh, I just thought McRae and Dunkley score better, don't they? Yeah. yeah Bond's do. more susceptible to a tag as well. If you're asking yeah. who I'd pick for my team, I would pick Bond Pelly to like join the Eagles yeah. out of those three, no question. But I, I think for either. fantasy... like Well, see, that first Bulldogs game, Bond... Scored well and above those the highest. That's true. I think he was over 130 as well. Yeah, that's true. He I, has big games. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not. There's no. I wouldn't make a real strong argument why I don't pick Bond or anything like that. But <laughs> I, I would just. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Bulldogs have like is the highest chance out of those three to play forward as well if they need like another avenue. Mm, yeah, and Bond. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He was actually they, they did that quite a lot. Was it last yeah. year or the year before? I think they were like trialing him as like a mm, almost key forward. Well, well, Norton's out. Did you say that? No, no Norton's out for like. A, like a reasonable amount of time. They got Josh Bruce in now. Since when? Oh, wait, oh, he he got injured the he's other day. Injured? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, he's injured. Yeah. Um, but I th- I think it's a fairly oh, bad injury. They, so. they, got, they got Bruce in. Yeah. Injured. So hopefully they don't send Bond forward too much. Yeah. It would be dumb too because I think he might win the Brownlow this year. So. Um, yeah, that, that's my midfield. Uh, Bush, uh, anything to add? To, how'd you go with your? Mine's midfield? quite different. Like I, my oh. team's probably going to be shift. And shuffled a lot, but I've sort of got Tom Mitchell. Everyone's sort of got him. Yep. My premiums, I've gone Paddy Cripps and Elliot Yo. Like yeah, okay. the way my things have shuffled, they were sort of what I could afford. I've even gone Libra as a mid price, sort of because he was steady. Like you know what his floor is, sort of thing. You know. Do you know how much he costs? Off the top Nearby five sixty. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've gone Bradley Hill because I think he'll probably get to more opportunity to have more of the ball in St Kilda than he did Freo. Where five, the five centric Freo, I guess. Okay. So and yeah, PDs there. And Tom Scully, actually, I think as well, he's had a full pre-season considering last season he was pretty good considering everyone thought he wasn't going to play all year and he was staffed. Mm. He ended up playing half a year, didn't look bad. Another yeah, pre-season, okay. only 490. I think he's worth a punt. Yeah, right. Especially with Tom Mitchell back as well, getting those clearances, flicking it out to Tom Scully for easy posies. Mm, cool. Yeah, Moss, did you have the rookie Albie Putness? <laughs> <laughs> No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Albie Putnis? What team's he from? Albie Putnis digging your ass. <laughs> <laughs> there are just moments on this channel where my real personality just comes out out of nowhere and then I just go back to being a footy nerd and that, uh, it must be very, very confusing for my footy <laughs> It's just bipolar. <laughs> One personality is just dick jokes and the other is yeah. just footy nerd. If you look, like the last podcast we did was just like me talking, well, us talking seriously about footy and then every now and then I'd be like, these nuts. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, um, so Morse goes through your team. Mine's different again mm-hmm. as well. Um, well, I've also, uh, obviously got Raul Pickett and Anderson, um, clear choices. Um, and I've got, got Cornelio the same uh, reason Brendan did. But I've also got uh, uh, Chad Wingard from Hawthorne. A few people have him. Yeah. What's the case for Chad Wingard? I think he's going to get a lot more time playing up in the midfield. Wait, so you've picked him in your midfield? Or is it, sorry, yeah, in got, the midfield. Yeah, well, yeah, as a mid-price option because he's only 582000 Yeah, I've, I've got Wingard yeah. as well by my forward line. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and then I've gone, as a premium, I've gone Taylor Adams. Um, okay. With Trelaw out, it just makes sense. A bit more ball time in the midfield. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. Um, and then uh, Brayshaw from Freire. Oh, nice one. In your midfield because he, he's forward. Yeah, he's forward uh, mid yeah, as well. Yeah, just the way I could figure out my 
icings and stuff that worked yeah. out. I originally did have Blake Akers, actually. Oh, um, Blake Akers, I, I was going to bring him up in the forward line. It's because he's a forward as well, or maybe not? Yeah, he's forward. Yeah, so okay. Yeah, mid forward. Yeah. Um, well, he's actually quite a good fantasy player when he's fit. The yeah. problem is he's just the yeah. least. Yeah, Frio's going to give him heaps of time on the wing, I think. He can't, yeah. he can't um, run many Akers, hey? Oh. Uh, <laughs> and that was the end of True yeah, Footy Podcast 49. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if he wasn't going to miss round one, I think he'd be a shoe in. I agree. Um, I, would, I would be putting him in my team. Putting this, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. But yeah, see, so it's pretty varied. Everyone's midfield. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's yeah, it is a bit more vari- uh, variability. Like I originally, I originally had uh, Merritt in there. Mm. I reckon he's gonna have a cracker season, but I don't know at eight hundred and three thousand. Yeah, very it's true. Really worth it. Yeah, yet. yeah. A lot of I think, gamble. He always like, starts pretty slow. I feel. I looked at the percentages. Um, Lockie Neal's probably one of the more, more popular choices, but I don't like him in the fact that he'll get like fifty touches in the game, like just get a hundred. Yeah, um, that's true. He's like, I, 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 even though that's still good, yeah, I don't like that as like just stat wise. Like, just like, exactly, <laughs> that should be like a one fifty straight up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, players like him, like Matt Crouch. Yeah. Um, I just yeah, players I don't like yet. Yeah, like, yeah the positions only. Yeah. There's no those, cause cause those ta- like if you can get someone that drops twenty tackles a game, you're gonna get yeah. Yeah. tons of fantasy points exactly. just like that. That was my thing with Elliot Yo, the tackling. He's a one yeah. of the best tacklers around, true. so he's always steady production with his tackling. He just gets thrown around a bit, Yo, like around the field. Mm. Not, not <laughs> in the bedroom. <laughs> so I've heard. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> um, no, but that's the only thing with him. Sometimes he gets he's a too defensive versatile, role. Yeah, yeah, it's too versatile, and I think that's what stopped him being like considered a real good mid because he doesn't like play there all the time. Mm. But then again, the numbers don't Tackling like. like he's, marks. Yeah, he's fairly handy. good at yeah. like fantasy in general. He's good at them too. Yeah. Anything anyone else want to say about mids? Did we, oh, did we say bench at all? Not really. No. No. It's, it's just whoever's playing. Yeah, really there's there's so many options that you could go with for seventy k. Okay, but on the bench, do you, are you guys saying nothing over like 170k? I haven't got a, I haven't got a single person over 170k. I originally really? did have, I had one in. I can't remember who it was for like low 200s, mm. but I'm not having to swap it out just to get more Interesting. better players in my team. So I've got 182 Bianco. Okay, yeah, yeah. right, fair enough. Um, I don't know if he will might. I guess we'll, we, we, none of us know which rookie's going to play. But I went, I went expensive rookies on the bench, like 250. So I went. Um, did I pick Sarong? Yeah, yeah. Sarong was one of them, and Schoenberg from Harry, uh, from from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Schoenberg from Guardian Levy handball. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the worst joke that's <laughs> ever been made on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're leaving. Yeah. Huh? Um, fuck, where were we? <laughs> uh, Schoenberg, Adelaide are rebuilding. He's second round draft pick. They need to get the kids into the team. He'll probably play. Oh, that's that's obviously a placeholder. Uh, Bryce Gibbs. Does anyone have him? I'm guessing not because none of you mentioned him. Gone, <laughs> though. I like looked at him like last year, uh, but he's horrible yeah. now. Like I don't know what's wrong with him. He's horrible. Horrible. Yeah, fuck that. Like, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But, I wouldn't even consider him. Well, anyway. I was listening to the fantasy, uh, the traders rather, and they were saying, oh, yeah, Bryce Gibbs, real good value. And I was like, 600K is still actually quite a lot of money. Yeah, is for he... him to score like 75 to 80 every yeah. game. Yeah. He's, he's just pure myth though, right? Yeah, I think you're right. Is he like playing like a new role in Adelaide? I think something? he's going to be, I think he might be pushing back. I think he might yeah, be playing that loose defender one. role, which might see him get a lot of kicks. But isn't that like more like a seedsman or like a... Yeah. Seedsman, Smith, Flair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're just trying to, like, they paid that much money for him. Like, they've they, they got to use him somehow. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think he's going to turn into an uber spud. Like, yeah, I think he's still... still no, he's, no, he's still a decent player. Like, yeah. he's, he's actually, he's probably worth the price you pay for him, like, in his points. Yeah. But he's not going to grow from there at all. Yeah, that's probably a good summary. That's very true. Busha. Yeah? Rock me, baby. Well, uh, <laughs> go on with Darcy Cameron and Luke Jackson. No, no, I've got Brody Grundy and Luke Jackson. <laughs> okay. Does anyone not have Grundy? I think you'd be dumb not to have him yeah. captain every single yeah. week. Too juicy, hey. Too, <laughs> Too yeah, juicy. He's, yeah, he, gets, he's he gets the possessions of a midfielder yeah. and like 40 hit outs a game. So. He, he, yeah. does, he does what everyone loves him to do. He's literally, instead of tapping out a rock, he just grabs it. And, just and I watched that Collingwood it. documentary and he's actually a nice person. He is a nice person. Yeah, yeah. He seems yes. delightful. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah, I like four rucks. Great reason to pick him. Four rucks, just because <laughs> there's, only, there's only two of them, obviously. Yeah. Um, I just go with like the main options of like I'd rather just get two like good rucks and just don't have to worry about them for the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So that's what I did so last year. Yeah, like, second option. Yeah, Gorn and Grundy last year. Well, Gorn, I think his favorite. Well, with, like everyone, I think is not picking him because he might not be fit for round one. But I don't know if he definitely won't be fit. Uh, I've heard. I've heard. 
that he might be. But yeah. It's like, obviously, like you'll see, I, I don't have him in my team right now, mm. but if he gets named, then I might shuffle my team to start with him because I, Rux, I just want to, don't have to worry about them like for the rest of the... Yeah. Rest of the I might game. even live with him being out round one and put him in, potentially, see how I go. See, but yeah, there's, there's so there. much potential in Jacobs. Yeah, that's it. And he's probably yeah. going to play every game. Um, he's going to play every game. In the Marsh series, they played him differently. Um, to, uh, I can't remember his Adelaide. name. No. Uh, uh, sh- sausage. Last year. Sausage. M- Mumford. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a complete mental balance. <laughs> they, they, got a, they played him completely different to Mumford where Jacobs was almost just like uh, a loose roaming player along the back and just grabbing loose balls the whole time. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> no, 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 I don't know that's, that's a clear statement. That's clear, a, clear statement. Um, <laughs> but he ended up taking a lot of marks and getting a lot of possessions out of it. Um, so yeah, he, yeah. he could be... What, what did he score? I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but I think it's going to be very easy, easy for him to James? reach his break he's, even. He'd be like 30 plus, I'd yeah. say. Not yeah. like 34, but like 32, if I had to guess. Yeah, he's, I, think, I feel like he's been around a long old, time. Like he was at Carlton, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Carlton? Yeah, it was yeah, Carlton. Yeah. Yeah. But don't, don't they say rucks don't really get good until they're... No, until rucks what, don't crack. 30, until they're 30? <laughs> yeah, until you're 30. Until you're 30. No one really rocks and rolls. <laughs> yeah. <well. laughs> God, just the bar keeps getting lower. Um, wait, so Bush, you had Jackson on the field. Yeah. Talk to me. Well, because the, it's the uncertainty around yeah. Gorn... I well, couldn't really it, think of any other ruck that I particularly like the way I've shuffled my team at this present shuffle of the cards. And that Nui versus uh, Jackson could be round one. Because uh, I think that's why they might rush Gorn in, uh, so that he doesn't get pulverised in the first game against Nick Nat Nui. Just Nat Nui is just going to kill him in the hit outs. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's physically dominate, like domineering sort of ruck as well. I feel like Nat Nui would take him to task. Because so. they don't really have anyone else, right? Bruce is out. Yeah. I believe Bruce is out, so like Jackson. you'll get some cash off Jackson. Yeah, that's why yeah. I figured. That's why I have him in until I can figure out something more permanent. He's Actually, on my no. bench. Does, do you guys have him? Who's no, on? I got no Cameron. Dustin Cameron. Yeah, too yeah. expensive for the for the bench. Uh, too expensive because yeah. even then, like you don't know. Like mm. obviously, Gorn's going to be first choice to him. There's no point keeping him on the bench because even if he plays what like, three games, he'll make. He'll probably get like forty points a game. Exactly. So he'll probably yeah. make like fifty k, and then yeah. that's not enough to get a downgrade. Like mm. it's, it's a waste. You might as well just. Like, for my theory is that you might as well just start with a 170 KR mm-hmm. and then uh, use that money elsewhere. Okay. Because, yeah, yeah he's not going to make that much. He's get, like, as you said, 40. He's versus Nick Nate first round. Does, it, does everyone have Cameron on the, on the bench? I didn't pick Cameron because I've picked Cameron every fucking year. Sorry about that. We just had a minor audio technical glitch. Yeah, Jesse just got sops that he's pulled the... Yeah. Like, yeah. I was middle of complaining about picking Darcy Cameron every year. Yeah, when he was at Sydney every year, I think everyone had him in that R2 position, but he never did anything. I guess that's not really a strong argument for him not playing this year, but I don't know. Obviously, he's coming behind um, Grundy and Cox. <laughs> <laughs> From behind, though. No, it doesn't matter. No, but you know what I was trying to say. I don't know. Even no. though I think he did well in Marsh, I don't know if he'll crack a game, but I guess if you're going to have him as a bench option, he's probably up there with the best... You could choice, pick, yeah. right? So, did you pick him as well? I didn't actually, because I once I found out that he got moved to Collingwood, um, is no chance of playing. Yeah, he was, yes. He's behind, as you said, he's behind Cox and yeah. And Grundy. So we've heard. Yeah, and, um, but even, even at Sydney, but. yeah. Well, even yes, at Sydney, <laughs> even at Sydney, he wasn't getting a Jordan. game, and he was what behind Sinclair. That's it. Yeah, and that's Nace, true. Naismith was injured. Like Sinclair yeah. was stayed fit pretty much the whole. The whole year. And Good point. Yeah. Yeah. To see him play. So. Yeah. Do you think um, Naismith needs to work on fitness? <laughs> work on fitness. Digging your ass. <laughs> Who knows if that'll make the final cut? Probably not. Um, <laughs> where were we? Yeah, I just thought that was a bit of a fucking. Uh, actually, no, um, that was a stretch. Man. <laughs> after oh, Sydney's Marshes game. Like your ass. <laughs> after Sydney's Marshes game, um, people are trying to pick up. Uh, Nate Smith, hey, because mm. they actually think that he's a chance of uh, doing pretty well because he's pretty fucking cheap. But yeah, what is he like? Two forty? I think he's like yeah, two something somewhere around. It's like well, that's two, cheap. Yeah, it's pretty Jackson. good for fitness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> and then we don't know if Sydney, well, like Sydney's lineup's going to be maybe they'll play two rock and he'll get a constant game. But yeah, yeah, actually, it's probably a good shout. It's probably so a better see option. See if he can fit Jackson. into the team. Mm. Tram, <laughs> yeah, cool. Bush, did you mention your ruck bench? Dust Cameron. And oh, okay. Yeah, that's the other question. Did anyone use the utility second spot um, for anything other than a ruck? I've gone a mid forward with mine. I'll yeah, I also say. have a mid forward. Yeah, okay. I feel like you get the most out of it. Like, there's no point on like the reason why they made the utility spot was because 
R four was never used. Yeah. And um, so if you don't use it for like a dual position player or a midfielder or a forward, like yeah, uh, it's probably not worth it. So what did you you go with? Uh, I went with a defender mid. But who, then who did, that's just going to change that's, that's depending B- on yeah, who plays. Bianco's yeah. there. Whoever but, you can oh, squeeze. That's only, that's only because he's got a yeah, high team selected percentage, and uh, it, that will change to whoever's playing. Makes sense, uh, doesn't one. it? I went with Connor Buterich. Um, ah, so did I. Because he actually played and he's 170k and he's a mid forward. So that's, yeah. that's the extent of it. Yeah. I've got a real preliminary Eli Smith. Yeah, so he's, he was a first round draft pick last year. Pretty physically ready made. Not a, I guess Brisbane's an established team. That's the only downside yeah. to it though. Him and Stasovic would be getting games if they played for a rebuilding team, but they obviously played Brisbane. So it's Can I, uh, do I sense some pre-draft romance, Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> you do not. Um, all right, forward line, Mortz. I'm going to lead the discussion here. If I can open my phone, I will uh, will tell you. I've heard that one before. Um, Obviously, obvious choice for everyone. I don't think there's many people that haven't chosen Whitfield. Yeah. Um, I've I've picked him. What? (laughs) I've picked him. (laughs) What did it sound like I said? Uh, I picked him. Oh, okay, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I did did actually. (laughs) Um, So, obviously, Whitfield's guaranteed a ton every single week. Um, Great cricketer. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> um, as well as Whitfield, I went uh, the big uh, Norm Smith, uh, Dusty Martin. Mm. Um, I feel like he's just he's just too reliable to go past, especially in a forward line. Yeah. To get to get these good midfielders um, with that dual position player, like they've taken Dangerfield off the dual position in the forward line now. Mm. So Dusty Martin's pretty much the next best thing. Yeah, that's true. I, I have those players as well. Great yeah. Of all time. Though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Daisy Pierce. Daisy yeah. Pierce. He, I've he, also got uh, Petraka. Yeah, he was the one I wanted to mention as well. Yeah. Why'd you pick Petraka? Um, I just think he's uh, he's shown well in the March series, and he's just kind of um, he's going to have a really big breakout season. And at 560k, like you can't really go wrong. He got 145 with yeah. three goals, 38 possessions. Uh, the, he's just a little bit inconsistent. That's the only thing. Like, but again, he's also 23 or t- something like that. 24 this year. So. It makes sense, yeah. It makes sense he's inconsistent up to this point, playing like a forward role as well. If, if he can start off with like a good run of form and just the first four games get yeah. over 100 and then start stepping, you've made like 100k on him. Yeah, Easy. I think, uh, I I think I he's can, juicy enough to I, I can see why people pick Petrarca uh, because he like, obviously he leads March games and because of his price, but I think it's a total bait. He's like, yeah. I don't think he's a like great player at all. Um, Who would you pick out well. of him? Mm-hmm. Petrarca versus yeah. Andrew Brayshaw in a uh, position. Probably a bad person to compare it to because I don't think like everyone's telling like Brayshaw to be a breakout as well, but I haven't seen anything like. Well, I think clear the, that the strong argument out. is that he will actually be played in the midfield. For yes, okay, yeah, which is yeah, the but then uh, unless unless like uh, they like I fully see it, then I believe it. But then mm. like I, I get like he's a top, like high draft pick and yeah. he's mid price. Like, he, he could break out, but then what if he doesn't? Then yeah, yeah, stuff. I uh, suppose yeah. But it's worth a gamble. It's worth a it's worth a try. Like, um, and then if it doesn't pay off, then swap someone else, I guess. Yeah, that's true. That is what I'll do. Yes. Uh, who else you got? Uh, pretty. Uh, got so I got two higher priced um, rookies in Flanders and Georgiades. Georgiades, yeah. Yep. Georgiades, not um, yet. So I think they've both just got a good chance to play round one. Yes. Um, Very true. Um, so that's just a cash grab in that one and then the last one I picked and I have the, to my memory I cannot remember why and I know there's a good reason but I picked Lukosius okay because um, he's playing back and he might rack up posies maybe yeah, yeah. he's, he's sort of places like that like floating um, like re- pushing really hard at the ground sort of tall but gets a lot of the ball because he's quite a good ball user yeah I think Jared Brand is going to be used like that for the Eagles this year I guess yeah fair enough wait how much does he cost sorry uh, 380 mm. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Interesting. And also, I can't afford anyone else. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, fair enough. If you have 380 just Ben, he's probably going to be one of the best sponsors. In that price, yeah. I went with LDU for only 395 so that's... Oh, yeah, I don't mind that. Range. I don't mind Mid that. Mid-forward. Yeah, because he's another player like Brayshaw, who um, who was probably going to get, like, minutes in this. Well, how much did he save us? 395 Yeah, so when LDU versus a- Andrew Brayshaw, you're probably thinking they're probably not too far off each other. Mm-hmm. Maybe. You'd find that money to go to Brayshaw. I've yeah, got fair both. Enough. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, okay. Isn't isn't LD like a like a DJ? <laughs> Who are you thinking of? Isn't that, a, is, 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 isn't that a grocery store? Aldi? <laughs> <laughs> isn't that a vodka-based beverage? Jokes just kick up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I 
God. Lose viewership. Um, cool. Bush, do you have any other forwards to add? I've I've taken a flyer. I've taken a few flyers. The two we've mentioned already. I've also gone with Hugh Greenwood as a bit of a flyer as well. Yeah, he was a strong contender for me as 580, well. Five eighty, like Gold Coast. They're going to want him to play a more senior, prominent role. Yep. Rather than Adelaide, where he's a bit in and out of the side, wasn't yep. featured as much. I think he can do well. It's fair logic. And Isaac Rankin and Max King as two rookies, I think. Yeah, so I've got they're both the, of them yeah. on my bench as well. Yeah. I think they're probably the best two 170k players you can pick. Yeah. Because they're probably certainly going to play for both their Most clubs. Most of the season. They're very yeah. valued picks. Yeah. I don't think they'll score that well. They get, get like 40s, maybe. Yeah, so Max King is a key forward. Isaac Rankin's a small forward in the team that's going to struggle. Yeah. But, I would, yeah, I'd pick them as well. Oh, another player I had was... Um, Jake, or uh, well, considered was Jake Arts. I'm totally hijacking it because it wasn't my turn to talk, but I just realised Jake Arts. Brendan, what do you reckon? Who's your forward? <laughs> <laughs> Jake Arts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Artsy. It's, it's, yeah. it's a silent F. Yeah. <laughs> fake Arts? <laughs> I thought it was Arts. Arts. <laughs> um, <laughs> any, anything else? No, what about you, um, Court? So I. It's, uh, Four, four line this year. I thought last year's four line was stanky, but like forward options this year is pretty pretty horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So I went, I went like uh, I went with the mindset of uh, like um, stacking up again, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, so I did get Whitfield as because um, he's a must have, and then I went Devin Smith. Okay. Even though he's coming back from a long injury run, uh, when he did play, uh, he was good, and I, I rate him a lot. He was and, huge um, the year before, like 2018. Yeah, yeah. And then I just, just, just like getting like any like key forward of any sort. Sure. Like, because he's a midfielder, he's always like, going to be on the ball, so mm. more possessions. Yep. Um, I did go for his two mid-prices in Greenwood. Uh, I think he's going to get more opportunity at Gold Coast and uh, Wingard as well. So Wingard because uh, Hawks did pick up Patton, and I feel like they're going to play... Uh, they won't need Wingard in the forward line as much, so... So oh, you've also picked Patton, despite just saying yes, you never pick but, a key forward of any sort. But, but Patton does ruck as well. Yeah, he true. Will ruck as well. So, um, what will he though? I'm not convinced because they got McAvoy and they've got yeah, um, Segler. Segler. But then they did play McAvoy as and like as that, back. Um, yeah a bang. Yeah, still. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm still looking to it. So like obviously if, an, an, if a better opportunity comes, uh, yep. pl- option comes up, then I'll pick him. But Patton at the moment because he did, did do decently in the Marsh series as well. Mm-hmm. So. Um, even if he just rucks in the forward line, there's still a couple of points. There. Yeah, fair enough. That's f- fairly fair. Yeah. That's fairly fair. Fairly fair. And then uh, <laughs> last spot, uh, Ned, Ned Flanders. Ned Flanders. Yeah, ah, Ned, Ned yes. Flanders. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Flanders. Yeah, I Pick 11 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah go um, first. Just because to, like, it was just sort of, sort of through like, team selected by percentage. And, yeah, so, yeah. So obviously if he doesn't play, then or like trade him out to someone else. But for yeah. now, it's just... He yeah. might play. Gold Coast has just got so many youngsters yeah. like that could play. Yeah. That it, it might be competitive. But yeah, he's pretty ready made. So I, I feel like yeah, Gold Coast have just like realised that they rebuild like the last couple of years have just been shit. So yep. it's like, no, let's let's rebuild, rebuild. So yeah. We should play all that. Yeah. I feel like if you get two or three good games out of the first few starting rookies at the Gold Coast, they're pretty much gonna be a lock for a while. Mm. They're, going, they're obviously gonna rotate through the ones who are struggling a little bit and see what they can get out of them. But yeah, that's true. But yeah, guys like Flanders and Rail and Anderson and stuff yeah. are just going to be yep. pretty all-season locks. That's it. Very true. Cool, guys. Well, I think we've gone through everyone's teams. Anything else we really want to say? <laughs> just killed the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> nah. Um, join, join the league. Oh, actually, no. There is actually one thing I wanted to ask. Have you got questions? What's the deal with Liam Henry? Bush. As a Fremantle fan, is he going to crack a game? Because I feel like he's someone who could play a games early and he's got 254k. Which is expensive. I don't know. I play? wouldn't put my my fantasy money on yeah, it. Yeah, it's just some real heinous forward. Have you uh, have you got any H. thoughts for players maybe later in the season that might break out? I saw Harley Benell's back in senior training. Oh, that's a good call, actually. I have no idea how much he costs, though. I think he's quite he's, cheap. He's, he's 240. He, mu- he must be cheap, yeah. He's, he's about 240. Yeah, he, he's the exception with the injury rule. Like, he's way too injured. Yeah. Like, that's just like yeah. starting, like, yeah. Mm. And there's also the possibility that. Injury is a euphemism for other incidences. Yeah. <laughs> like a prolapse. Oh, the old Jesse Hogan injury. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was going to say something, but I'm not going to do that anyway. Um, yeah, okay, fair enough. Oh, is there anyone else you mentioned? I feel like there's one bloke you didn't mention. 
Is he cherry ripe for a game? You might Who? say. Who? Tristan Cherry. Did you say him? No. Yeah. Oh, che- oh yeah. you mean Zeri? <laughs> <laughs> no, like so, yeah, um, yeah. So I've got, I've got, I've got Cherry as a, as a, as a rock bench at yeah. the moment, but that's only because I did have Darcy Cameron and realised that Darcy Cameron is behind Cox mm. and Grundy, so um, I feel like Cherry might have a more opportunity because North have what just Goldstein, and then they, they have like. Um, the, I'm trying what, to think who they're. Well, Brown, uh, Brown. Brown would probably do Brown some forward, forward rucking, right? yeah. or what's his name? Um, does Larky ruck at yeah, all? Yeah, I think Larky does. But then, yeah, I mean, if Cherry plays, then yeah, I'll pick yeah, him. But fair it, it just depends on who's playing or not. So. Yeah. So what you guys are saying there, it's pronounced Chavier Ellis. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, it should be. Yeah. It's actually um, Chodia Ellis. Sorry. <laughs> Question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I got a draft. Uh, coming up soon. Besides Grundy, I've got the number three pick in the draft oh, for the fantasy. Um, oh, we talked about it yeah. and then just didn't. Okay. Um, besides Grundy, who do you reckon is the next best pick? If you were to draft, oh, if you had pick well, two, I, overall. Yeah. I had a. Well, well, I had I've pick, got three, but I had pick oh, two right, in my right. league, but I fucked up, didn't log on in time, and it auto picked Tom Mitchell for me. So we'll see that's how that not, goes. That's not bad though. Yeah, it could bad. have been worse. Yeah, could that, have been worse. that could be a blessing disguise. Yeah. Tom Mitchell's like, yeah, yeah. I'd say. If I had picked two and Grundy was gone, I'd definitely go Whitfield. Um, yeah. Because in draft, yeah. I... Over McRae? Yes, because in draft... Whitfield was putting out stupid the numbers. The difference between... Yeah. Like, the, the position just adds so much more value because yeah, the difference yeah. between... Of like a, That's a good call. Like a, a second round forward and a first round forward is like 30 points. Yeah. Whereas yeah. a first round mid and a second round mid could be like 10 points. Because there's so yeah. many midfielders that you could choose from. Yeah. That like over as you're a hundred versus the forward line, like once you go past Whitfield and like Smith and Dusty, yeah, there's literally no one it's left. In the forward line, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what I did in my draft last year. Just um, only draft. We back we line had forwards. Uh, our draft was two three two three one two. Makes sense. And I was a uh, second last pick, so I picked uh, Lloyd and Laird, and the person between me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What a poor choice of Picks midfield, so there's yeah. literally no more defenders left after those three. Everyone started panicking, pick defenders, and just opened up the draft so much because yeah, everyone okay. was just like, there's no more defenders left. Like, yeah, shit. Pick someone like... So you think if, if I had picked three in this draft, obviously Grundy's going to go number one. That's a clear choice. Mm-hmm. Um, if you got third pick... So it's McRae or Whitfield, right? It's McRae or Whitfield? Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go for... If, you, if you're third and or Whitfield... Josh Kelly. If Whitfield got picked... You wouldn't go for like a Crisp or a Lloyd or... Uh, if we, if like Because then, it, it then I, I got the third last pick in the next round because like it... Yeah. Snake, order, yeah. yeah. So it depends. So I couldn't like, miss out it, on it. It depends on how much you value defenders. If you think that you can get a couple of good defenders that uh, will be there late, then you shouldn't need to get a good defender mm. because... But as I said, like every draft is going to be different. Yeah. If you pick a defender... Other I had three last start. year and Grundy fell to me, so... Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And Grundy fell you from three. Yeah, because well. yeah, I took McRae, then Danger, and then... Oh. And not even Tommy. Oh, Tommy would have broken his leg by then, probably. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the same as Rux as well. Once Grundy and Gorn are gone, there's... Wits is a steady... I didn't mind. Wits is I'd not wits bad. Is, yeah, Again, if Jacobs uh, plays well, he oh, might you be a good option. You wouldn't waste your early Top pick on him. Definitely not. Because, like, yeah, there's yeah. so many other... But once people. he gets snapped up, you don't want to leave him too late sort of thing because he's yeah, definitely. the clear number three. Yeah. And then after that, there's probably two more drop-off. Number two in hit-outs. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Juicy. All right, guys. Well, I think we did pretty well today. That was actually that actually went longer than I expected, which is cool. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for coming on. Make a disclaimer that these aren't tips. These are just gen- discussing <laughs> <Yeah. a> team. <laughs> these aren't tips. These are the insights don't, of the regular man. Man. speculation. Please do hearsay. not take our advice. <laughs> it's all yeah. hearsay. Yeah, Listen no, to it. Criticize it. Don't take it as advice. <laughs> Don't come to work and be like, oh, you're the guys from True Footy. You fucked my Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the downside of this. Yeah, true. Now, nah, well, thank you for coming on, guys. Um, for all the viewers as well, uh, I'm going away for a couple of weeks, but I am going to schedule this. Yeah, that's actually something I should mention. I'm going to schedule this for like a week's time. So, because all the games, by the time this comes out, March 2 will have happened. Yeah. So there'll be like all this new stuff that we haven't talked about. So our analysis will be even more outdated is what you're trying to say. No, <laughs> yes. it'll, it'll just be the rookie Definitely stuff. Definitely don't listen to it. <laughs> it'll just be the rookie stuff, yeah. It'll just unless, be the rookie stuff. Unless someone get, like someone big gets injured in a yeah. Marsh game. Then. Yeah, well, that's true. That's, that's, that's probably... Toronto. The, if we did this last week, I would have yeah. Toronto. And Knock on wood for I, that I, one. I feel like a lot of people are talking, like uh, taking the Marsh games a bit too 
Seriously though, we They're do this cool. every year. That was yeah. that was honestly my biggest downfall last year because in the March series I had McMillan from North and <laughs> yeah, you did. I remember that. And <laughs> I had Mc- really McCarthy from Brisbane, and they both yeah. turned really good in the Mar- both games of the March series yeah. on like in like a defense role, and I picked them both, and they just tanked all season. Mm. That's like yeah, I haven't looked at the fantasy scores for March at all because yeah, I don't okay. want to get baited because a lot of people are getting baited because. Yeah. Um, people they, they don't take the game seriously like as much as like obviously they are taking it somewhat seriously but it's not a real game so if no if, and most if people are only got 40 they're not going to go, time gonna go harder than stuff so yeah people are scoring because it's a good indication for premiums and rookies that may play and yeah. apart from that it and then be. it's just like an experimental time where they can put defenders or forwards into the midfield just see yeah. how they a tracker might have got so high because you have 90 percent game time as opposed to the seven yeah. you might get in real life yeah or like yeah more time mid that's very true yeah and it's the same like even in a non-fantasy like people we always get trapped into this thing and ooh maybe preseason means something now because they're playing stronger teams than they used to but it never means anything so but yeah cool alright guys well thank you for watching thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you in the next podcast which I think will have Caden McDonald that really? means nothing to you guys who's, but yeah who's uh, Caden McDonald? Uh, he's just a big YouTuber cool I don't watch YouTube <laughs> yeah, okay <laughs> thanks guys see you later see ya <laughs>